Hi, this is the first of several videos where we're going to look at symbolic examples. It's, I think, important to be able to symbolically represent values of annuities and understand the symbols first, and then we'll work on numeric values for those symbols in later videos, uh, later in the course. But for now, let's look at an, an example where we're symbolically representing the value of an annuity. For this particular annuity, we've got 17 payments. Uh, the payments are four. I see they're monthly payments. And I could describe that valuation date as, what, three months before the first payment. Now, I don't have a symbol, one symbol, that represents the value of the annuity at that valuation date. So I'm going to use an intermediate valuation date. I'll put a dotted line where that intermediate valuation date is. And I'm going to choose there because I have a symbol to represent the value of that annuity at that valuation date at, at the dotted line. It's 17 payments of four, one period before the first of those payments of four. And so four times A angle 17 is what I use to value that annuity at that dotted line. And then, of course, I need to take that value and discount it two periods to get back to the valuation date. And I would do that by multiplying by V squared. So I could symbolically represent the value of this annuity by a four times A angle 17 times a V squared. I wanted to introduce this because there's some actuarial notation that you're expected to know on the exam for this sort of, this type of annuity. This type of annuity is called a deferred annuity. I'll get to that. The symbol for that, that we represent, so that A angle 17 times V squared can be represented by the symbol uh, in red there, and that's red as a two deferred. That vertical bar is red as deferred. Two deferred A angle 17. What's in red then is the, in words, the present value of a two month deferred 17 month basic annuity immediate. It's two month deferred because I'm thinking of it as an annuity immediate. As an annuity immediate, the first payment is at the end of the first period. So the begin date would be at, the, at where the dotted line is. And of course that's two months after the original vow date valuation date. So that's why I call it a two month deferred. This wants a two month deferred 17 month basic annuity immediate. Okay, there's other ways that I could get a symbolic representation of the value of the annuity there. For instance, if I would have chose the intermediate valuation date at the time of the first payment, which makes perfect sense to me to do, because I could use the symbol four times an A double dot angle 17 as the symbol that represents the value of the annuity at the dotted line shown now. And of course, I would need to discount that for th three months to get back to the original valuation date, and I would do that by multiplying by V cubed. Likewise, with the previous notation, there's uh, deferred notation for this too. So the set A double dot angle 17 times V to the third, I could write with this symbol, the symbol in red would be the symbol in red would be red, three deferred A double dot angle 17. And now I'm thinking of this as a three month deferred 17 month basic annuity due. It's three month deferred because I'm thinking of it as an annuity due. With that annuity due, the first payment is at the beginning of the first period. And so the start date would be where the dotted line is. And of course, that's three months after the original valuation date. So that's why it's a three month deferred uh, annuity do. Okay, so that was the val date that I used here. Those were two, the last two expressions then are perfectly acceptable expressions. There's lots of different ways to do this. And you could even do some odd thing. You might just be an odd person and say, hey, I'm going to use a valuation date here at the time of the last payment. That's actually, I'm okay with that because the value of the annuity at that time is a four times an S angle 17. We have a symbol to represent the value there. Now you're going, to, you're going to have to figure out how many periods to discount that back to to get to the original valuation date. And if you take off your shoes and socks, do whatever you have to do, count, and you'll see that there are 19 periods that you're going to have to discount that back in order to get to the original valuation date. So the value of the annuity would be a 4 times S angle 17 times a V to the 19th. Okay, so let's look at the expressions that we have then. We have this four times A angle 17 times V squared. That's, that's one way we could value the annuity. That's one uh, expression that we could use to value the annuity. We also had a four times A double dot angle 17 times V cubed. 
I wanted to show you in this slide the reason that those two are going to give you the same answer is because remember the A angle 17 is an A double dot angle 17 times V. So in the first expression that we have, the 4 times A angle 17 times V squared, if for A angle 17 you would substitute in A double dot angle 17 times V, then group that V with the V squared, you'll end up with the second expression that we have there. And then finally we, we did this one. Again, that's not natural to me, but that might be natural to you. A 4 times an S angle 17 times a V to the 19th. Again, I want to convince you that you're going to get the same numeric value when we do eventually get to uh, uh, calculate numeric values for these things. And I want to show you that by looking at the relationship between an A angle 17 and an S angle 17. Remember those valuation dates are 17 periods apart, so I'd have to discount the S angle 17 17 periods. I would do so by multiplying by a V to the 17th to get an A angle 17. So in the expression, the top expression in red, if for the A angle 17, if you would substitute in the S angle 17 times V to the 17th, group the V to the 17th with the V squared, you'll get the V to the 19th in the bottom uh, expression in red. So those are all uh, equivalent expressions in the sense that you're going to get the same numeric value regardless of which one you use. Okay, but to me the more natural choices would be one of these two, and, and they're kind of equally, um, uh, equally natural for me. Okay, let's look at another example. In this example, let's symbolically represent the value of a perpetuity shown at the valuation date. So I can describe this since the payments are monthly, I'm sorry, since the timeline is monthly, the payments are every three months or quarterly. So I could describe this as a qu uh, quarterly payments of seven forever valued, what, two months before the first payment. That's how I could describe this picture. Now the payments are quarterly, so I know I'm going to have to use a quarterly effective interest rate somewhere in the problem, so let me just denote that by a Q. Once again, I don't have a symbol, a single symbol, to represent the value of this perpetuity at the valuation date, so I have to take some intermediate valuation date. Let me take the intermediate valuation date at the time of the first payment, because the symbol that I would use to represent the value of the perpetuity there would be a 7 times an A double dot angle infinity. Now, I'm thinking of this as taking that number and I need to discount it for two months. So in my mind, I'm thinking I'm going to be multiplying this by a V squared because I'm discounting for two months, but that's months. So now I need to introduce another notation for the, or another symbol for the monthly effective interest rate. Let me use an M for that. Now that I have two interest rates, I need to be careful about, I have a Q and an M, I got to be careful about what the A double dot angle infinity is with respect to. Those payments are quarterly, so this is with the, the symbol there is with respect to the quarterly effective interest rate. And now I'm going to discount that for two periods by multiplying by a V squared, but the V squared is with respect to the M interest rate. Now remember the V, when you have periodic effective interest rates, like an I, given an I, the V is a 1 over a 1 plus I. That's a periodic discount factor. So using an M, I would have a, just a a V with respect to M would be a 1 over a 1 plus M. That would be the monthly discount factor, and that's what I would be using in this particular picture. Okay, so now let's go back to the, uh, to the uh, intermediate valuation date, and I've got a 7 times an A double dot angle infinity as the value of this perpetuity at the, first pay, at the time of the first payment. And I said, we're going to discount for two months. Now, we could be thinking of the two months as just two-thirds of a quarter. And if I do that, then the V to the M with respect to, remember V is 1 over 1 plus I, so V with respect to M will be V over 1 plus M, that would be the monthly discount factor. If I change the M to a Q, then a V with respect to Q would be the quarterly discount factor, that would be 1 over 1 plus Q. And now at this point, I'm, not, I'm discounting for, again, two months, but the two months are two thirds of a quarter, and so I would multiply by a V to the two thirds power in order to get the expression at the valuation date, the value of this, new, this perpetuity at the valuation date. So this is a perfectly acceptable expression also. Notice that this is kind of a cleaner expression in the sense of I'm only using one interest rate, the Q, and so I don't really need to put the decorations, the extra symbols of the Q and, and 
um, and so forth on like, like I did when I had two interest rates floating around. So on this slide, I have the that the A double dot symbol is with respect to Q and the V squared symbol is with respect to M. But when I'm only using the Q, now I don't really need those extra decorations. Of course, you could put them there, but they're, they're not needed. They make it look a little bit more complicated than it really is, in my opinion. Okay, so that's, a, that's another way that I could write, or that's a way I could write the value of the annuity by only using, with only using the Q, quarterly effective interest rate. Let's go back. There's one more, uh, one more kind of mistake I want you to be careful of, so I want to point that out to you, a common mistake I see students make. We're trying to value this perpetuity at the valuation date, and stu students will want to use the symbol 7 times an A angle infinity, and sometimes they might think that's giving me a value that one month before the first payment of 7. They think of that as one period before the first payment of seven, but you got to be careful. The seven, the payments are seven or quarterly. This is not right. The payments are seven or quarterly, so the A symbol there is with respect to a quarterly effective interest rate, which means it's giving me a value. Seven times A angle infinity is giving me a value one quarter before the first payment of seven. The payments of seven are quarterly, so A angle infinity is giving me the, the value one quarterly period before, so that would be where I have it shown, and now I need to accumulate that for one period to get to the valuation date. I could accumulate it if the period is month, so I could think of this as, well, I'm going to accumulate it for one month. Well, if I'm going to think of it that way, that I'm accumulating it for one month, then I need to introduce the symbol, the monthly effective interest rate, and then I accumulate one month by multiplying by a 1 plus m. Now remember, the V value is with respect to, to M is 1 over a 1 plus M. And so I could actually even use V notation here too and say I'm accumulating the, the 1 plus M then would be the reciprocal of V. I could use negative exponents of V in other words to uh, accumulate. When I'm taking V to the, a positive power, I'm discounting. When I take V to a negative power, I'm, accumu I'm accumulating. So this will be times a V to the minus 1. Notice all the extra decorations that I have, though. Again, I've got the, the, the Q on the A angle infinity symbol. I have the subscript of M on the V. That's all necessary to describe what I'm doing. Now, on the other hand, if I want to, again, use the set 7 times A angle infinity symbol to represent the value of the annuity one period before, one month before the first payment. I could think of accumulating one month as accumulating one third of a quarter. And so accumulating one third of a quarter would mean I would multiply by a 1 plus Q to the one third power. And again, with V being a 1 over 1 plus Q, I could use a V notation here and, and say, well, that's a V to the minus 1 third. And notice I don't have to use extra symbols because I've only got one, one interest rate in the problem there. So there's no confusion on what interest rate is, using, is being used with the A symbol and what interest rate is being used with the V symbol. It's just one, one interest rate there, the quarterly effective interest rate. So both of these would be acceptable expressions, the seven times A angle infinity times V to the minus one third, or a seven times A double dot angle infinity times a V to the two thirds. Both are acceptable expressions for the value of the annuity, at, or, or this case, the value of the perpetuity at the valuation date. Okay, so these are good examples. They're gonna show up again later in the course where we'll be looking for numeric values of these types of, of annuities and perpetuities. So we'll do some more symbolic examples in the next video. I'll see you then.